Hello and welcome to the Nexus Gaming Series Season 2. I am Bludgeon coming to you with a Division A matchup yet again. Tonight on the Battleground we will be facing Reality Esports on the left in blue against the Black Hand over on the red on the right. All right, so Reality versus the Black Hand. This is an interesting matchup. Two of these teams who are on the middle lower end of the standings currently in Division A. Black Hand at the moment is sitting on seven points in the league. They've got two match victories, one draw, and two losses. Reality Esports, on the other hand, sitting a little bit lower at five points. One match victory, two draws, and two losses. If you are new to the Nexus Gaming Series, one match consists of exactly two games. This is not a best of three series. The teams will each take a turn getting first hero pick. They have each chosen a map. If you can take both games in the series, your team collects three points. If you don't win any games in the series, you collect zero points. And if you go one and one, you get one. So that's how the tournament is set up. Speaking of the map bans and picks, the Black Hand won the coin flip and they chose to play on their map of choice in the first game, which gives first hero pick over to Reality Esports for game number one. The Black Hand banned Tomb of the Spider Queen. Reality responded by banning Dragonshire. And Black Hand has selected Sky Temple for game number one. Reality Esports has chosen Towers of Doom for game number two. And we see the bans are already happening here in Champion Select, Hero Select, whatever you want to call it. Garrosh being banned out first by Reality. ETC banned by the Black Hand. Black Hand played last night against Illusion Esports. They were unable to secure uh, a win in that match, going 0-2 versus Illusion, which brings Illusion up to even with the Black Hand in the standings right now. So the Black Hand is certainly eager to get some points on the board tonight. Uh, ETC is a band they also favored uh, last night versus Illusion, so perhaps something about this champion that uh, they don't want to face, or perhaps something they know about reality. However, ETC, of course, uh, just a strong champion these days. Same with Garrosh. Uh, not too much thought probably needs to go into why those heroes were picked. Uh, however, Garrosh obviously um, is someone who's extremely disruptive to a front line, able to pull people towards him and then throw them into the middle of his own team. For the frozen ETC, of course, being a very strong tank who has options between mobility around the map and very strong the team fight presence. Anubarak being picked up first by Reality Esports over here. Uh, obviously a very strong tank pick. Uh, so the tank pool obviously is a focus here early on in this draft. ETC ban, Garrosh ban, Anubarak pick. Anubarak, a very annoying tank because he's very tough. He has a lot of CC. He can move around. Uh, he wastes tower ammunition with his little beetles. And on top of that, a very strong heroic ability, able to cocoon an enemy hero totally incapacitating them for a number of seconds. So, very strong pick there. And on the other side, we have Tassadar and Vala coming out for the Black Hand. Obviously, Vala, one of the strong hyper carries in the current environment, uh, often paired up with something like a Tassadar and another support as well to really just drive all of the resources into that damage source. Tassadar, of course, no slouch as well, able to um, pick up kills now and then. Also, a very annoying character to face if you happen to be using any stealth heroes. So, uh, not sure if that was necessarily a consideration in this draft, but uh, if Reality had been thinking about taking something like a Zero Tool or a Nova or, you know, any of those jokers, uh, they probably won't now, but they probably were not to begin with anyway. So, two supports being picked up by Reality in that one round, Rhaegar and Lieutenant Morales right off the bat. Uh, we've seen a lot of double support happening these days. It's just such a strong thing for a team to have. Often mixing someone who's good at kind of persistent, efficient AoE healing and someone who's good at burst healing. So that's what we see with Rhaegar and Lieutenant Morales. Obviously, Rhaegar has decent AoE healing, also has extremely strong burst healing with uh, Ancestral Healing. Lieutenant Morales 
uh, very good at just keeping a team up over long periods of time and healing a single person up quickly. So uh, <laughs> right now we see an extremely difficult to kill uh, core for Reality's team. Uh, really interesting to see a Cho'Gall ban by the Black Hand. I'm not sure if they have intelligence to suggest, and by intelligence I mean uh, like spy uh, knowledge, to suggest that Reality uh, had been thinking about doing that. Uh, obviously the Black Hand didn't want to do it, but that's a very interesting ban. So unfortunately for all of us, we will not be seeing Cho'Gall in this game. Who knows about next game? Oriel being banned out by Reality, pinching off the support pool uh, quite a lot, having selected two already, banning a third. We'll see uh, what the Black Hand chooses to go with for another support, if they want one. Uh, Brightwing is still available. Uther is still available. Mal, Furion still available. Um, lots of them still available, of course. I'll remind any viewers that uh, Anna is currently not available to be selected in uh, Nexus Gaming Series. It takes, uh, I believe, a week from release for a hero to be eligible. Or, uh, anyway, back to this draft. The timer is counting down. I'm very interested to see what the Black Hand is going to do to complete uh, this draft. Will they grab another support now? Will they go for a front line? What are they going to do here? Okay, Varian. A great destiny. And Stukov. Victory there we go. So Stukov Tassadar will be the double support coming in for the Black Hand. Obviously Stukov, very good at efficient, persistent AoE healing of a team that is grouped up. And Black Hand is building such a team. Um, they're going to have a composition that's going to want to stay together as much as they can. Um, Varian being a front line for that Vala. Stukov and Tassadar just feeding heals into her, disrupting the enemy team, whether it's with uh, pustules or or uh, silences, or an arm pushing someone away, or a flailing swipe, whatever it may happen to be. Obviously, Tassadar is going to be throwing shields on, which will probably give Vala extreme lifesteal. So that's a team that's going to want to stick together. So they've chosen great supports for that purpose. Uh, Reality now about to complete their own team composition. We'll see what they do to finish this off. Uh, looks like they still need some damage to put into their composition as well. We'll see if they go for two backliners or maybe one and sort of a front line. Malfail Kel'Thuzad. All right, well, if we're talking about damage, those are two huge damage dealers right there who definitely do them from different uh, positions. Malfail diving into the enemy team at times, um, very willing to get into the mix, and which is great for Kel'Thuzad because this is someone who wants to deal a lot of damage from far away and does not want to have to deal with enemy players anywhere near him. So the combination of a new Barak, uh to disrupt and distract the enemy team is pretty good news for Kel'Thuzad. Malthael obviously uh, ideally suited to taking on teams with multiple tanks with high health pools. Um, so that may discourage another tank pick from the Black Hand, although who knows whether they were planning on doing that either way. And they do. So it's a Zarya. All right. So in a way, this is kind of like triple support for this Vala because not only does she have Tassadar to shield her, not only does she have Stukov to heal her, uh, but now Zarya can also shield. So I have a feeling that uh, Reality is going to have a difficult time getting kills onto the Black Hand, but the same might be true the other way around as well. Only one way to find out, and that's to get into the match. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back.
Prepare for your All right, game one is happening between Reality Esports and the Black Hand in Division A. This is the Nexus Gaming Series. On Reality Esports, we have InfoFox playing Lieutenant Morales, Magnetic on Anubarak, Matt407 on Kelfazad. Needens on Rhaegar, and Real Rad Dad playing Malthiel. Over on the side of the Black Hand, we have Unlucky on Vala, Kupolin on Stukov, Akashi on Zarya, Disco on Tassadar, and Dayuni playing Varian. Well, just like that, Game 1 is underway on Sky Temple. This was a map selected by the Black Hand. So uh, we'll see what kind of stuff they can get going here. Looks like Reality Esports going for some immediate damage onto this top wall, getting some early damage on that turret. It's going to fall extremely quickly. Meanwhile, the Black Hand doing a similar thing down towards the bottom. Uh, they were a little bit slower to get there, but Disco now up top to defend, putting shields on his structures. Some decent damage and pull going on to Disco, but he, of course, just activates that Tassadar ability. It phase shifts right out of there, and it's fairly safe. So he's basically here at this point just to soak up some XP, try to slow down the uh, push from reality as much as he can without putting himself in too much danger. Doing a good job of that so far. Uh, meanwhile, Needon's only just now getting back down here to do the same thing for his bottom lane. As we can see, uh, currently reality has a bit of an XP advantage, I think due to that differential in soak. But it looks like things are probably going to calm down here, although... Reality still has a bunch of minions with them. They might be able to just take this fort right now. And unfortunately for Reality, they were not able to do the same. So excellent pressure advantage put forth uh, by the Black Hand to just really take it to Reality's base and get some nice damage. That mana well is gone. That's going to matter uh, when it's time for that bottom shrine. However, let's talk about the shrines that are happening right now. Reality already taking control of both middle and um, top shrine. I don't know if Tassadar is going to be able to push Malfi off of that, but the members of the Black Hand coming in are going to push them off of mid. Dayuni goes straight in against Matt. Nice chains. Bounces people around a little bit. Magnetic goes straight in again, uh, but 4v3 there. Reality has to back away. Relinquish control of that shrine. Or temple, rather, to the Black Hand, at least for now, but it looks like they're not going to... Uh, they're not going to give up the fight here. Needens comes in to join them. It's now a 4v3 as Capolin comes in to make it a 4v4. Diuni getting quite low. Magnetic taking some damage. Varian just activating that super annoying trait. Look at that silence bubble really wreaking havoc with Matt407 and Magnetic both having to walk away. Red control uh, maintained on this temple so far for the Black Hand. Malthale, meanwhile, just kept control top plane as well. So um, I think that's... Well, it's in the favor of reality slightly. They did control some of the bullets from that middle temple, but nice job from the Black Hand to take back what they could. As the teams move away from that temple phase, the XP is still fairly even. About a half level advantage at this point for the Black Hand. Uh, they've both grabbed their bottom mercenaries, so Siege Giant's going to be just shooting rocks at each other in a moment here. Akashi, Needens, and Matt407 hovering around this bottom lane. Looks like Infofox coming down as well. So at the moment, it's just kind of a 3v0 bottom lane. My money is on those blue giants lasting the longest. Disco comes down, <laughs> shields up those giants, but uh, takes some damage in return. Probably not going to be able to do a whole lot, but actually, you know what? Might be able to at least slow those giants down to the point where they're basically dead by the time they reach the structures. We'll see how that goes. Up in mid, Capone and Magnetic just facing off, getting XP for themselves. Um, Black Hand here has a chance to put some pressure on this top lane as Unlucky and Akashi are escorting this group of mercenaries and minions into that top base. Uh, Tassadar looks like he held things off enough. No kills yet this game, although there's a lot of action coming up this top lane. Magnetic now joining his team. Akashi split from the rest of the team. Nice pop-up from Magnetic. Akashi has to go around the wrong way. And uh, Kupolin really just not really able to save his teammate there. Did his best. Put down a silence field. But uh, unfortunately, that Zarya just got outmaneuvered uh, by that nice collapse from Magnetic. First Blood going over to Reality Esports. Bottom Temple now activating. We'll see whether or not 
Uh, Black Hand can make use of this mana well advantage down here. They will be able to uh, more easily regenerate their health and mana, giving them potentially an advantage if it comes to a drawn out skirmish over this bottom temple. But so far, reality uh, not really. Made... Well, okay, they're starting to make their way down here. Early control, however, is in favor of the Black Hand. It's a 4v4 split all over the place. Magnetic going straight for the back line of the Black Hand. Kupolin getting isolated and killed. There goes a support down already. Unlucky firing bullets from the back. Uh, so far managing to avoid a lot of the damage. Akashi soaking up quite a bit now. Nice chains from Kelfazot. Dayuni, well, is variant and so does survive. However, that's Black Hand being chased straight out of that territory as reality takes control of that bottom temple. While that was happening, by the way, there was a blue mercenary camp which is still pushing in the top lane so that's a pressure advantage for reality it's always nice if you can get something pushing in your favor at the same time you've got a big team fight going on so really either way the team fight goes you at least accomplish something and if you happen to win the team fight it's a double win so uh reality now deciding to maintain this advantage as tacitar has been forced to go up there and deal with that mercenary camp they've got a 5v4 push advantage they're going to try to take down this bottom fort Magnetic really does, is not afraid to go deep here, pushing against Unlucky, deciding to push him kind of away from the fight. However, taking a lot of damage in return, Magnetic finally pays for his aggression. It's now a 4v4 down here. Dayuni does not want to give this up. Kel'Thuzad having to run out the back lines. Real Rad Dad separated a little bit, but it looks like that's going to be a disengage. So one kill uh, for now will be all that's going to happen. However, level 10 has been reached for the Black Hand, and they are now five strong. Looking to at least get an invade onto this bottom siege camp. Uh, Infofox getting some damage actually. Taunted by Varian. And wow. What a nice chain of CC. I can't even actually believe Infofox is still alive. How long can he last here? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. ha <laughs> ha. What a fantastic escape from Infofox. He should have been dead to rights. The Varian Taunt, the Valor, Reign of Vengeance, the Tassadar Wall, everything was lined up perfectly to seal his death. Somehow, he walks away. Vala just kind of listlessly going after him by herself, thinking this was a sure thing. And I, I thought it was a sure thing as well, but Infofox pulls out the Medivac, manages to get himself out of an incredibly dangerous situation with only a few health left. However, this is a new team fight now, and it looks like Reality Esports may have the upper hand. Rhaegar has already used the super heal onto Infofox. Red health bar is getting fairly low. Can they chase it? Nice separation from Kel'Thuzad onto Kapol, and there goes the Stukov, the rest of Black Hand, getting split up now as Dayuni has to avoid that Tassadar wall. However, Varian, uh, not an easy person to take down. It looks like he's just going to try to run into the enemy base to at least split up the team, but Akashi finds himself in the middle of three blue players and drops as well. Whatever happened to Varian? Still alive, Dayuni, uh, you know, wasting as much time as he can. Looks like he might actually get a kill onto Matt 407. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the great escape does not happen. However, it's an extremely uh, valorous death as he manages to get a kill onto Matt 407 before he goes down himself. I've got to think there's a bit of sloppy play going on here from both sides uh infofox managing to get away from a really crazy situation on the part of the other team and this time <laughs> his teammate uh Kel'Thuzad, who uh is being played by our friend matt 407 finds himself dying to a varian uh right beside his own base well you know what it happens hopefully the team is calm enough to uh, recover from those things laugh it off and move on with the game it is a new temple phase. Reality Esports right now controlling the bottom temple. The Black Hand controlling the top temple. Fairly even game up to this point. Uh, more structures have been knocked down on the blue side than the orange side at this point. But uh, uh, sorry, the other way around. It's now even as uh, the Black Hand has taken down that last fort. Looks like Reality Esports may be going for a keep push here. They're at least going to get this turret down. Black Hand now coming down to respond. Unlucky and Kapolin in the front lines. 
Akashi coming to support Varian still up on top on that temple. So it's currently a 5v4 down here. Really nice chain there. Magnetic going in to support, adding the CC on top of Akashi. Tassadar while cuts Magnetic off a little bit from his own team. Unlucky now taking some damage. Akashi is low but able to back out on the backside. Uh, looks like Reality is going to have to back away, but they did at least take down a couple of structures, making it easier the next time they want to put pressure on that bottom keep. All players alive right now, and we have a pause. All right. It seems there's a bit of lagging going on. We'll see how this is going to be resolved, but taking a look at the game as it stands right now, relatively even if we look at the mini map over here we can see that the structures are pretty well the same on both sides we've got all keeps alive on the side of reality they have most of their uh, turrets alive as well only missing one up in the top lane over on the side of the black hand quite a similar situation only difference is they have lost a little bit more of that keep wall down towards the bottom but uh really fine difference there so pretty well even as far as structures goes on the XP front, Reality has a slight edge, um, a little more than half a level advantage. However, they're both at even talent tiers at the moment. So for now, that's basically uh, even as well. Uh, taking a look at the talent choices for the teams, Vala has gone for the Hungering Arrow build. That's stacking up pretty nicely, uh, 15 stacks away from getting that nice bonus damage. And it looks like the game is about to start again. Here we go back into Sky Temple. You are watching Reality Esports versus the Black Hand on the Nexus Gaming Series. Wow, Magnetic really kind of off on his own up there, but that Anubrak is not afraid to get into the face of his enemies. Black Hand picking up their bottom siege camp as Reality does the same. Black Hand, though, not even going to let those siege giants get into the lane. They're just going to wipe him out right here, right now. There is no other place I'd want to be. Uh, my mistake. Looks like that siege camp actually uh, was already gone. Reality deciding to take their top bruiser camp. Always nice calm point in the game when you can just stroll around, fight some dudes in sweet outfits, and get them to fight for you. I mean, look at this guy. He's got like a cobra staff or something. That guy looks amazing. Check out his suit. I mean, all these guys are sweet, even the little guys. It's a shame that they, uh, you know, they just kind of live and die on this one little place, but I guess that's a soldier's life. All right. Black Hand coming out to take control of this top vision and clean out these aforementioned soldiers. Oh my god, it's so sad. These poor little creatures getting just burned alive by Zarya. No remorse whatsoever. These guys are putting up a bit of a fight. Oh my gosh, look at the chopping. This is a dramatic battle for the ages. Or not. Well, while we were focused on that extremely interesting fight, Tassadar died down in the bottom lane as Reality Esports deciding to concentrate their forces down here. They're getting a nice route onto Dione. However, Varian able to protect himself and walk out of there. Uh, looks like Reality is going to have to satisfy, the, satisfy themselves with just the kill as they actually cannot get that bottom keep just yet. Temples now are active in the mid and the top. Black Hand having the positional advantage to get up there first. We'll see how long they can hold on to that. Magnetic uh, right there chases Dione off the point. They do get three bullets for themselves anyway. Looks like uh, Black Hand is not going to contest that middle temple for the moment. Or are they? Four members now coming in. Tassadar back alive coming to support his team. Dione on the front lines chases them right out and... Reality Esports just walks away. They decide that they're not interested in taking that engage. And so far, no one has claimed the top temple. Looks like uh, this team fight is happening. Dayuni is rooted. Kupolin gets rooted. Wow. Just like that, this is happening. Kupolin manages to back out. Dayuni in the middle of everything, taking a lot of damage. Can that variant get out alive? Down to 50 HP. And no, he goes down. Akashi extremely low. Unlucky is just that as he gets rooted and killed. Akashi is about to go next. Kapolin might get big. Kapolin goes down as well. That Anubarak just did not let anyone escape. That's uh, a nice kill there from Lieutenant Morales, who then pops everyone into her spaceship. 
and they decide that it is finally time to get that bottom fort. And they're not satisfied with that. It's going to be 10 seconds before Varian comes up. And quite a while before the rest of the team comes up as well. Reality deciding to just get straight onto that core and see what they can accomplish here. Disco being completely ignored by the enemy team. Varian is now back. Val is going to be back in one second. I don't think Reality can actually accomplish this. And they have to start running away. Tassadar gets a nice wall separating the team there. But a nice chains from Kel'Thuzad scares Disco away. Reality still trying to get away unlucky, looking perhaps for that Reign of Vengeance. Not able to find it. Temples are still active. They've just kind of been sitting there. I don't think anyone has touched the top one yet. Mid-Temple has a um, little more than half of its ammo gone, but a lot of it just waiting there for the taking. And Reality Esports decides this is the time to try to get a boss. They're burning it down extremely quickly, but the Black Hand has arrived. Can they stop them? Cocoon has gone down. Boss is almost dead. Unlucky and Disco and Dayuni all in the front lines. Real Rad Dad getting extremely low. Flailing Swipe goes out from Stukov, but not too much effect. Real Rad Dad pops that Malthael Tormented Souls, gets into the middle of the enemy team, dishes out damage, healing himself, but not able to get any kills. Finally, Vala kills the Malthael. That's one down for reality. The Black Hand deciding to continue this chase. And while that happened, they managed to secure the boss for themselves. Really nice turnaround from the Black Hand. Finally, pressure going back into their favor. Uh, perhaps reality decided to push things a little too far. That was a very dangerous call to go for that boss. Perhaps would have been better to go up and get control of those temples. Um, however... They made their choice. The boss didn't really get a whole lot done, just did a bit of damage to one of the turrets, took out the wall. However, what it did do is it forced Reality to go down and deal with it. So while that's happening, the Black Hand has taken control of this middle temple. Looks like they're going to get all the bullets out of that. And they've taken control of the top temple as well. And so far, no one from Reality Esports is anywhere near to do anything about this. They're starting to make their way up now. Uh, they may get there before Unlucky can do much about it. Oh, Medivac comes in! All of the members of Reality deciding they want to fight this right now. It's a sudden 5v4 cocoon goes down. Stukov already has used that ult. Looks like, uh, unfortunately, not quite as dramatic an engagement as perhaps Reality was going for, but I love their gumption. Sitting now on top of that temple. Dione goes in, gets a taunt onto Kel'Thuzad. Mad 407 in grave danger here. Goes down early. That's a lot of magic damage down on the side of reality. However, Vala goes down in return. So both major DPS sources dead for both teams. A lot of health bars getting extremely low. Kashi goes down. Ancestral healing goes down onto Magnetic, who takes that opportunity to go straight back in onto Dione. Varian goes down. Kapolin now going down to real Radad and Infofox in the back line. Tassadar wall happens, splits people up a little bit, but it's not enough. Disco now, last to fall, and the Black Hand has been completely wiped out of this game. Reality now, five, well, they have four members alive. What can they do with this? This medevac is amazing. Spaceship straight to the core. All members of Reality, aside from their poor deceased friend Kel'Thuzad, is here to take this game. Now, they're doing it a little bit slowly. Valen might come back to life before they can finish it. They do not have much minion support now. Core dropping below 40%. Uh, oh, Cocoon straight onto Vala. That is just so sad. Look at her wriggling in there. Well, just like that, game number one goes over to Reality Esports. Very exciting game. Really well played by both teams. A lot of back and forth there. Uh, but I've got to say, I love the medevac use from Infofox in that game. I've never seen a spaceship flying around on this game the same way I did just now. Kudos to Infofox for that Lieutenant Morales play. Well played by all of reality. Kudos to the Black Hand as well. They played a decent game, uh, but it just wasn't enough for game one. So we'll see if they can turn it around and take game two. We will take a little break. The stream will shut off for a moment, but we'll be back for game two after this. Don't touch that dial. You are watching Nexus Gaming Series.